Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Perspectives here on Rogers State University campus. And our guest today is Chuck Hoskin, who is the principal chief of the Cherokee Nation in Oklahoma, and actually the largest uh, Cherokee Nation, or the largest Indian nation in the country. Chief, good to have you, my friend. Sam, it is good to be on with you, you know, with what's going on. It's good to see you. It's good to, it's see, good you. to see you. It's good to, be, good to be seen, as they say. Well, what's the, how is the uh, pandemic, or I should say, how are the numbers coming out of the tribe? You know, our numbers have been lower than anticipated. We've had 85 positive cases, and that's, Sam, within our health system. We have the largest health system in the country. That doesn't mean there were just 85 Cherokees that tested positive, but within our large health system, 85. Uh, three deaths within our health system, and again, the same for that number. Uh, we know uh, the first chair, the first Oklahoman that passed away was actually uh, Mr. Dry, Mr. Merle Dry from Tulsa. Uh, not in our health system, but uh, but so there's other Cherokees who certainly have suffered from this. But within our health system, the number was lower than expected, and most importantly, it was manageable by our health system. And that's really what we're all looking for when we're operating health system: is can we manage the influx? And we've held up very well, I would say. Boy, no kidding. Well, you've done you've done a good job down there. I I was surprised to learn this morning that the Navajo Nation out in Arizona, which is in terms of square miles, a very large area, I think four or five northern states could probably fit into the reservation. But that that tribe has been ravaged by the virus. They absolutely have, uh, by numbers, I think it was uh, as recent as last week, their, their uh, infection rate per capita was, I believe, the highest in the nation when you compared them to states. They had a number of challenges going in. Uh, that reservation, as you say, very large in terms of uh, land mass, also a large population. Uh, coupled with that, some infrastructure problems in some parts of that reservation. I mean, we're talking about a lack of running water to some homes. And when you're talking about an environment where you need to keep people sheltered in place and safe, uh, that's a big barrier to achieving those goals. So uh, I visited with President Nez uh, a, a month or so ago uh, on, a, on a program similar to this. Uh, and uh, we actually donated some masks to uh, the Navajo Nation. 5,000 surgical masks just to help their health system because they're dealing with a lot. Chief, I understand they also have a problem with uh, not only running water, but electricity, uh, health care, uh, education. I mean, they're an impoverished group of folk. They are. And, you know, that's a conversation we could spend even a whole show on. And, and frankly, people in this country need to know that. And I hope that what's come out of this uh, is uh, a better understanding, a deeper understanding of what some parts of Indian country are up against. We're very blessed at the Cherokee Nation and other Indian nations within the state in terms of our resources, natural resources, the business investments that we're able to make. Some parts of the country, some tribes are not in that situation. And the Navajo are making progress. And President Nez is doing a wonderful job, but he has a big job to do. Uh, and I think people in this country, people in the Congress, people in the executive branch need to know what's going on and they need to focus in on helping Indian country, not only during a COVID-19 type pandemic response, but frankly, a broader policy to help tribes like the Navajo that really should not be up against these kind of barriers. This is going to sound like a simplistic offer, and I don't mean for it to, but there are going to be folks that will hear what you and I are talking about, and they're going to want to help. Mm -hmm. Is there a, a, a way to do it? Even if you're not Indian, what can they do? Sure. So there's lots of ways to donate and help. I think the most important thing is to donate in a way that's most meaningful. The National Congress of American Indians, NCAI, the largest advocacy organization in the country for Native Americans, actually has a special fund. And if folks will go to NCAI's Facebook page uh, or the National Congress of American Indians uh, website, there's a way to give that can help Indian country, including the Navajo Nation, uh, with some resources. So that's where I would direct people to. So it'd probably be the strongest and the simplest way to do it. Yes. Well, I'll tell you what, we're, I'm going to take a break a little bit early because when we come back, I want to talk with you about this mess going on with the governor's office and the courts sure. and all this business. Well, you know where I'm going with this. So why, why don't we just sit tight and we'll come back and have more right after this. 